<laughs> Do you hear that? <coughs> cough, cough, sneeze, sneeze. Is everybody around you sick? <laughs> Coughing and sneezing. Just seems like everywhere you turn, somebody's coming down with something. I didn't want to get sick, so I went to Whole Foods today and I bought myself three boosters, an immune refresher shot, another immune refresher shot with ginger, turmeric, and cayenne, and then an interior defense shot with extra zinc and vitamin D. Are these things going to keep me healthy? Stay tuned. Let's find out. Thanks so much for watching today. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell so you never miss a new recipe or new health tip. My name is Dr. Blake Schusterman. I'm a board certified kidney doctor, and I'm also the cooking doc, and everything we talk about here today is just information. Please talk to your doctor if you have any questions or concerns about your health. This is not medical advice. So everyone is sick. Some is COVID, lots is flu, there's enterovirus, there's rhinovirus, and then there's RSV, which the whole world is getting introduced to now, in case you never heard of it before. So what are the things that really work to keep you healthy when it comes to these times? Do these immune boosters that you get from the store actually work? Well, today we're going to tackle one of the most common things that people get to prevent colds, and that's zinc. So zinc is probably the most common supplement that people get to try to prevent themselves from getting sick. So the jury is still out, but let's talk about why zinc has the potential to lower the number of days that you're actually sick with a cold. And we're still looking to find out whether or not zinc can prevent you from getting a cold when you come into contact with those coughing <laughs> and sneezing people that just don't know how to cover their mouth or their nose. So depending on the virus, when you put zinc in that little test tube at certain concentrations, really high concentrations with some viruses, it may inhibit the way the virus infects people. So it may inhibit some of the enzymes in the virus, or it may inhibit the way the virus actually attacks to the cells. And these are key things because if the virus is not doing those things, then it's not getting you sick. So some of these things work well in a test tube, but they haven't been tested necessarily in a live person. And just because they work in a test tube does not mean they're going to work in a live person. Anybody who's followed scientific research knows that that is absolutely the case. But that's not a death sentence for zinc. I think there's still some promising information to talk about. Now on the human side, zinc is vital for a lot of bodily functions. Zinc wears many hats. It's involved in everything from the way the enzymes work in our body to the way our immune system functions, generating an immune response when we come into contact with viruses and bacteria. So you can see why zinc is so important for us to have and why people think that it may benefit people if you have a cold. So you want to make sure your body has enough zinc when that lunatic next to you on the plane is coughing and sneezing and rubbing his germy hands all over the seat. So the first thing that's important is to not be deficient in zinc because if you are deficient in zinc, you are definitely more susceptible to viruses and bacteria and fungus coming into your body. Most of us though are not deficient in zinc. Only 10 to 20% of the people based on a lot of the estimates that I've seen are deficient in zinc. So those people that are deficient in zinc need zinc supplementation. Everybody else already has enough zinc. So is the extra zinc that you're taking going to actually help? It's also important to note that too much zinc is also a bad thing. So zinc toxicity can cause you to have problems with your immunity, just like zinc deficiency. So in 2020, when everybody was trying to fight off COVID, $162 million was spent in the United States on zinc supplementation. Let's get into the data to see whether or not that actually helps people. In 2021, there was a large systematic review of all the other studies that have been done about zinc. So this is kind of a meta study, a study of studies. And so what they did is they pulled all those studies from the database and looked to see if they could make any generalizations about zinc based on pooling together all that other research. The problem with pooling together all that research is that all studies are different. So some of the studies looked at young people, some looked at old people, some looked at zinc lozenges, some looked at zinc tinctures, some looked at zinc nose sprays. So in order to take all that data and summarize it, to get one answer is difficult but they were able to come to some interesting conclusions and find some patterns that they thought were important. First, there were two trials where they gave people zinc as a prophylaxis. This is the one where like if you're going on a plane and you take zinc so you don't get it from the person next to you. Anyways, they gave these people zinc prophylaxis and then they gave them a cold. 
they actually inoculated them with the virus itself. These people are heroes that sign up for these kind of studies. Remember in 2020 when people were signing up to get COVID to see whether or not the treatments would help and how it affected the body? These people are heroes. Thank goodness for all of them. Well, what happened in these trials? Well, turns out the zinc didn't make much of a difference. The same number of people got a cold whether or not they had the zinc prophylaxis. Now, this was a little different than a trial where they gave people zinc prophylaxis and they say, well, go out into the real world. Let's see if you get a cold. Now, those studies came with some different results. Those studies showed that zinc actually did prevent colds when you were out in the community and exposed to the virus. Now, that kind of study has way more variables and things that can go wrong than one where you're kind of directly inoculating somebody with a virus. And also your alarm bells should be going off right now because when two trials show different things, or in this case, multiple trials show multiple different things, you know, you can often come to the conclusion that we don't know the answer yet. Now, what will happen is you'll get people that don't want to see that there are multiple conflicting data. So there's always that one person on the internet that will say zinc prevents colds. And then they'll pull up the one study that show that lo and behold, that study shows that zinc prevents colds, but they won't pull up the other five studies that show it doesn't. So when you have conflicting data, I think the answer is still unknown. Other trials looked at symptom severity and duration. So they wanted to know if maybe people who took zinc only coughed 20 times on day two instead of 40 times, or sneezing much less on day three, or maybe they had a lower fever on day one. Those are the kind of things that they wanted to know. They also looked at whether or not your symptoms would be shortened. So did zinc turn your five-day cold into a three-day cold? Because that would be key. And so we're still looking for better studies on zinc. But there was a suggestion that if you start taking zinc on the first day of your cold, you may have a shorter cold which is pretty important. I think we still need better data, but if you're gonna take anything away from the zinc studies, that's the thing that I took away. There's a possibility that taking zinc will lower the number of days that you have a cold. Now, how much zinc do you need to take to make that happen? Who the hell knows? That's the problem with these studies, really, is they're all over the place. So is it the lozenges? Is it the tincture? Is it the gel? We just don't know. And if you take too much zinc, you can feel bad. You can get nausea or vomiting. And as we talked about earlier, if you take too, too much zinc, you can actually lower your immune system. So finding that middle ground is kind of a guessing game. So to summarize, we don't know who will benefit, men or women or people who are just deficient. We don't know how much zinc you should take. We don't know when you should start taking the zinc. We don't know what type of zinc you should take. And we don't know exactly how much zinc is too much. So a lot of unknowns out there, but we do have suggestions that zinc may shorten the duration of your cold if you pick the right time, the right type, and the right virus. Now, again, this is not medical advice because zinc can make you feel sick and it can interact with a lot of medications, but for a lot of people, it may be worth a little bit of risk. Talk to your doctor if you want to consider it. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope you're staying healthy this winter. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, click that like button, hit that bell. I want to know if you take zinc. Comment in there. Let me know. Have you ever taken zinc for a cold? Do you try vitamin C? Do you try vitamin D? I've got lots of other videos on the way where we'll cover those topics. Check out my website, thecookingdoc.co, for the best chicken soup to help cure your cold. We'll see you next time.